So I'm going to show you, to the best of my ability, how I make mouse shapes in Fusion 360. Uh, so what I do is I always insert a mesh. I always have a reference to go off of, and this is because I pull to it in the form environment, and it's very useful. Gets you like at least halfway of the way there, just kind of for free. So if you want, you know, a reference, you just go on printables or something and like look at a test shape. You can, you know, maybe you grab the Lamzu Thorn, full mouse, or you get a test shape. This is for the OP1. Uh, you know, this is the method I use to make the shape. So I'm just going to kind of, I guess, you know, in an iterative fashion, work off of that. So insert the mesh, uh, go to the form environment. We get into it with this purple box here. Click on, oh, whoops, click, click box, and then click on this bottom here. And so this is where having, you know, the mesh is great. So go to the center and just make it bigger than the mesh. It doesn't really matter how much bigger, but make it bigger. Bigger is better than smaller for this type, uh, this type part of the process, rather. Uh, so it's going to start you out with a two by two box, kind of like this, and without mirror symmetry. So the thing about this is not enough detail here, you know, basically more faces is more detail. So you could say, oh, well, four might be reasonable. We get the amount of curvature we need, which maybe we can, but I like an odd amount. Whoops, not 45. I like an odd amount. So say five, seven, nine, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use symmetry on the length. And even if you're making an asymmetrical mouse, I would do this because what we're going to do is we're going to do this, do some pulling, do some nonsense and make the shape. And then you can just remove the symmetry if you don't want it. So this is good. Uh, basically, you don't want it resting on top of your mouse here, because what we're going to end up happening, uh, doing rather, is we're going to pull, and you actually need it to kind of engulf this, like it's, uh, this is stuck in ice, essentially, because, here, I'll just show you. Uh, so go ahead, double click, left click on the face here, and then try to pull here, and rather, surface or control points, you'll see, oh, it's kind of working, but if I look at my section analysis, you'll see it's like double folding over itself. And it's basically just trying to fold itself over the top twice, which is not what we want. We want it to basically use this as an outline and kind of pull to it, like a stencil or whatever. Uh, so in order to fix that, you can either move the mesh up or you can move the box down. I'm going to move the box down. And then if we're going to look at it on the side, it's basically like it's encased in ice or something like that. So next, before we pull, go ahead and look at everything. Uh, this step is going to help us in the future. It's very easy. So we did 5x5x5, five by five by five, so I'm going to look at 25 faces here. I want to go ahead and select all of these, and then we're going to uh, create a selection set. Right-click, create a selection set. And I did 25 because it's 5x5. Five five. You know, you do like 49 if you did 7x7, seven seven, you know, rip you. Uh, so then also, we're going to add a crease here. So double-click this face, and it'll select the front five. Uh, double-click the side, and it'll, it'll select the side five. And then basically it'll select the other side because of the mirror symmetry. Uh, do the back one, so we have, what, 15 edges? 20, technically, but it says 15 at the bottom. So uh, for these, go ahead, crease. And you're going to do this, because this is going to give us our flat bottom once we pull, which is, you know, obviously this part of the mouse, because the problem is otherwise we'd, we'd be leading in, like, let me go back a bunch. You know, you don't want this curve on the side. It prints a little worse, and also it's just not what we're going for. You could undo the crease later with uncrease, or, you know, you could do whatever you want later, but I would just suggest doing it like this. So then double click on these, go ahead and pull. And this will end up being pretty decent for control points. You can use surface points too. In this particular case, we wouldn't because, go ahead and hide this. No, oh, that's annoying. Here, select the target. Okay. Uh, so you see how this is like, you know, kind of folding in on itself. It's doing weird stuff, right? Generally, whenever you see it doing like really weird stuff, the problem is once you try to leave the form environment, it's going to error out and it's not going to be like usable geometry. So you want to avoid this kind of stuff. And technically, you could hit OK here, and then you could try to like mess with it and fix it. It's a lot of work to do it. I wouldn't do it. Uh, I'm not good at fixing it. And the problem is, you'll often get like, see right here, you're like, oh, that's fine. I would just pull this side down, you know, pull these up a little. The problem is, you see back here, it's like tucking into itself and folding in. There's like always going to be something that's like, oh, you fix this, you have to go fix something else. So just don't do it. In this case, we'd use control points. And now we're going to use that selection set that we made earlier. So go ahead and select. And then we're going to flatten these. And you can do fit. It's going to get you mostly flat. It might even be perfectly flat. I'm not sure. But just to be sure, I like to go to select parallel plane and select the bottom because we know it looks like it wasn't perfectly flat because the bottom plane is flat. We know that, right? So we want it parallel to that. Uh, so it's not doing anything weird here, but occasionally uh, you'll have to select again, depending on how tall either your box is or the mouse is, and then edit the form and like pull it down a little. Right here, we don't have to, so it's fine. Uh, so this is going to be the basis for your shape, and then you're just going to kind of want to edit, basically, you know, if I were making an OP1, obviously I'm making it, like, taller and stuff. The sides are different here still, and I'll go over some of how to fix that. But essentially, at this point, it's all going to be, like, trial and error based on what you want. 
and this is at the point where I like to make most of my changes with the symmetry here, but let's just say this was pretty close to what you wanted for whatever reason, and you're like, all right, now I'm going to make an asymmetric mouse, so obviously you have to clear the symmetry. So you'd be, be going to symmetry, clear symmetry, and then click this body, and then you're good to go, because otherwise, obviously, every change you make to the left would bank to the right. When we go over some of the other tools, so occasionally, after messing with these, you will have to reference the selection set and then reflatten the bottom. Uh, a workaround would be once you finish the form. Uh, I, I always just flatten the bottom again, but you could just create a sketch here and then make sure it's flat and then cut a bit off the bottom like this, you know, symmetric extrude, something like that. And that's another way to guarantee the bottom's flat. And you do want a flat bottom for printability, and that's just, you know, how we're going to make it. But so Control-Z, I'm going to back up into the form environment and kind of go over some of the tools I use. Uh, edit form is going to be used for, I mean, a lot. I don't necessarily know that you should be using it for like 75% of your actions, but that's what I use it for because it's the jack of all trades. So if you click here, uh, A, it gives you multiple dim dimensions you can work in and then the most freedom because you can move just up if you want, just in one plane. You could do both at once. You can mess with like, uh, I don't know what this is called, but it's messing with the vertexes. Uh, you could do this as well. It's another way to do it. Uh, you can rotate your camera and then just you have you know other dimensions you can mess with right make these wider make these smaller whatever the case is uh, it's the jack of all trades it's the thing i use the most but there are other useful ones as well uh, let's just say here i'm gonna make this white so it's a little easier to see when i'm not directly on it so let's say you're looking at what we got going on here and you're like uh, i want flat sides you know uh, you're gonna take it to the extreme you want really flat sides well, the flatten tool obviously is going to help you out with that. So you could just be fitting them to be flat amongst the faces you selected. Or if you want to go real hardcore, you could select a parallel plane. So you'd be I want these two faces as flat as this plane. And then that is what they're going to, you know, basically force it and the surrounding geometry to meld to. Uh, so maybe, you know, you want boxy mouse. You want something like this, right? Obviously, you don't have to do this, but this is just to give you an idea of what the tools do. Right? That is very flat. I'm going to back up twice and have some more curvature like we had. Uh, straighten is strange. I don't even like to click straighten right away. What I like to do is click a few lines and then try to straighten them like this and then make it fit. Same deal with this. You can make it fit to try to fit, you know, an angle here or if for whatever reason you wanted them perfectly straight again, you could do this. And this is obviously where you could make a bunch of different planes. You know, maybe you want planes at an angle because you're going to do something like uh, this plane at angle. I think we want this one. Nope. Uh, sorry, yeah, planet angle, I think this, I, I, I don't use planet angle much, as you can see, planet angle, so like this, and then let's just say you wanted it, like, you know, you want your front, like, pretty angled, go like this, and then we're gonna, oh, back up, man, give me this, okay, I'm uh, just giving you an idea of what you could do here. So let's just say that this is the angle you know you wanted it to, and then you'd be like, oh, okay, cool. Let's flatten all of this because we know that this is the angle we want. And it's not going to be 100% flat, but you'd flatten it to a parallel plane. This would be your parallel plane, and then you'd be really boxy. Obviously, you'd modify it from here uh, further, but you know that's just an example of something you could do with flatten. Uh, next up, slide edge. Slide edge is weird, so... I don't really know how to describe it that well. So let's just say we took this line loop here. Uh, so if you were to use edit form, which like I said, pretty versatile, you can do a lot with it, and you just want it to move to the right, what you'll see is it's as if you're obviously just moving this to the right. What's happening is you're taking all of these and you're just moving this way, right? That makes sense. But let's just say you want it to be a bit, uh, I guess, more controlled with your movement. So slide edge is going to do something similar to that. Like it's going to move them to the right except it's going to follow the existing curvature or, or uh, like, you know, T-splines or vertices or whatever it is. So let's say we're moving it down like that. So you can see instead of moving direction out or directionally out, uh, it's going out and then also down a bit because the curve it's following is like this. So it's down a bit. You don't have to use it to move whole line loops. You could use it for individual faces, you know, looking at something like, I don't know, say here. Say for whatever reason you wanted to slide this in a bit. You do something like this. Uh, for whatever reason, you have to pull the opposite direction, by the way, for slide. I'm not sure why. But if you take slide, like if I want to move this, I want it to the left. I have to click and drag to the right. Not sure why. That's just how it works. Um, another useful one might be crease like I already covered. For the most part, I just do crease in the bottom. But, you know, let's just say, for example, an aspect of mice. Uh, I clearly have a crease here. You can see because it's obviously folded kind of like paper here. Whereas if we look at this, this is curved, right? It's a form that's following uh, basically this curved geometry like pretty well. 
Uh, so you'd be grabbing probably these faces. Probably just these. Oh, actually, no. Just this one to start with. And you'd be creasing that. And if you wanted to, maybe you could crease the one next to it, too. And you can see, you can pull these out. Oops, here. Edit form. You can pull these out. And then it's like a much more pointed curve at the back if that's what you wanted for some reason. Uh, you don't have to do that. Uh, you're not holding that part of the mouse, but, you know, like I did in the last one. So it's like clearly not an invalid thing. It's something you could do. Subdivide I don't use much. Uh, I'm sure it's useful when you know what to do with it specifically, but that's why I like to start with, say, five, seven, or nine faces, because I want the details early so I don't have to jam them in later, because uh, you can always delete them too. But I, I've also never really deleted faces, but this would be clicking here. Maybe you wanted to change your, your comfort groove specifically. Maybe you were doing something like this, uh, and you could either specify or have it suggest. You know, maybe two by two is what I have, but let's say you didn't do two by two. You did, I don't know, you know, three or one in one way, and you just want to add comfort grooves going down, because uh, then you could take these and then kind of dig them down a bit with edit cur or edit form, right? And then we have comfort grooves, you know, pretty aggressive in this case, but it'd be something like, I don't know, maybe not literally the MZ1, but something like that, where you're like, oh, I really want comfort grooves, and obviously you need some kind of a detail to manipulate in order to have them. So that might be an instance in which you subdivide, but I tend not to use it much. Uh, so I use pull again at the beginning to kind of get the base shape, but you can also use pull for individual faces. So I'm going to hide. So let's just say I just wanted to pull just this area. Uh, it's kind of like flatten, where you I like to click before. Let's say I just wanted to pull these to kind of come in line with the sketch, or not the sketch, the, the reference. You can just pull them. Go ahead and make sure we're selecting our target. Here, why is it fighting me? Uh, sometimes it doesn't. Here, you can just click it on the side. Oh, here. Now I can. Okay. Um, so you can do that, you can go ahead and do it by surface or control, it basically just changes how aggressively it does it, or like the curve it follows. I don't know the exact like algorithm, but that's roughly it. Uh, what is helpful here is a section analysis along the side. Uh, so again, look at the difference here, control would be pulling these two, I would say a good amount, but like not that aggressively, and then surface is like much more aggressive in this case. So it just depends on what you want. Say you wanted to pull it through, and then you were like, okay, this is not bad, I want to tone it down a little, obviously you'd be editing form. Know, put, maybe pulling that down a little, or perhaps even uh, flattening it out, maybe. I don't know. Just depends on what you're looking for, obviously. But from here, it's basically all subjective based on what you want your end goal to be. You know, And this is this is where, uh, I don't know if I put in the earlier point in the video, this is where you'd break the symmetry if you don't want to. Uh, go ahead and isolate symmetry, or not isolate, clear symmetry. Be going like this. And then, obviously, you could be moving your sides independently from this point. You know, Maybe you want like the, the right side to fly out. Change my camera angles, so you'd be something like this. Maybe you even want to tuck in uh, right here, I don't know, you know, for like an indent or something, just random stuff like this, right? So that your left hand, now note, this is actually good that this happened. So this would be an example of geometry that's not gonna fly. So right here, it would say the T-spline failed to convert. You can continue and the body won't be valid. and It'll probably be a, what is it called? Like a surface or whatever or hit return and then say like, I'm gonna try to fix it. So I usually undo past this point and my kind of error here was since I was just moving these or whichever ones I was moving, I uh, wasn't considering that this uh, line loop or whatever is pretty close. So in this case, you probably just wanna move these in also. And then we're likely gonna avoid that issue. Yeah. And then you kind of get that effect, you know, if that's what you're looking for. Obviously this isn't, you know, the mouse of someone's dreams, but this is just to show you basically the process for how I end up making them. Uh, another thing that is useful that I didn't touch on up here is smooth. I don't use it a lot. Uh, I would say it's pretty sparingly, but, uh, you know, let's just say you select a group and you're like, well, this is kind of wonky, right? I want to smooth it out a bit. Uh, it'd probably help if I saw it symmetry, but it's a slider too. And you can hit control also, and it would show you what it's like before. And then, you know, keep it going. So you'd be like, hmm, okay, this is, this is undoubtedly smoother. Like it just makes it follow a more consistent curve path. And maybe that's closer to what you want. Or you're like, no, I want it less smooth, but still smoother. You go all the way. Maybe you're like, oh, okay. You know, obviously that's maybe not what I want, but that's how you would end up using smooth. I don't know a hundred percent where it's useful, but it is still another thing. These are basically the only ones I use. Uh, so it's a lot of that trial and error and then finish form periodically to make sure that it's going to, you know, be a workable body and that that error doesn't pop up that popped up on the side here where it's like, oh, the T-splines are all out of whack. And essentially that's what you're going to do. And then, you know, you're going to finish the form and move on to the next part of the mouse, which I'll have a separate video on.